bone grafting is a uh, is something that's been around for a long time. Uh, there are various ways to graft in different situations. So if you're missing a tooth, you can have bone grafts done either from your own body in another site, use that bone and transfer it into you know, like a tooth socket to preserve it. That's what we call that ridge preservation. That's one way. Subsequent to that, you can also use different things that are, we'll say, bottled for the most part. Things that are commercially available to you, like synthetic bone. There's also human cadaver bone. There's also bovine bone and equine bone. And those bones are all safe to use. FDA has approved them. Um, they do really well in certain situations. And for small grafts, all of those are appropriate. We use something called bone morphogenic protein, or BMP. Uh, we use uh, you know, bigger grafting materials, like we use blocks of their own bone from their tibia, from their uh, hip. We can use it from their ramus or their mandible, which is the ascending part of the lower jaw. So there's places we can obtain bone from. All of our bone grafting experiences, oral and maxillofacial surgeons, usually comes from our experience in trauma. So when somebody has a defect, we learn how to repair that defect, and sometimes it requires a tiny amount of bone, sometimes it requires a lot. From a perspective of treatment planning for someone who's here for one, two, or ten implants, you need to make sure that they have adequate, healthy, soft tissue that can protect the underlying implant and bone. And in conjunction with that, they need to have enough bone to withstand the physical forces that the mouth and jaw can exert upon it.